and for the longest time was one of the most famous writers who never published a book. <laughs> but his new book has uh, uh, debuted this year and uh, it has received rave reviews um, and it's called uh, the, sc the scatter here is too great. Umar Shahid Hamid is also um, a Karachi boy. He uh, attended grammar school, um, then took the CSS, uh, became a police officer, and after fighting with bad guys, decided he did write about fighting with bad guys. <laughs> Umar Shahid Hamid, the prisoner, is a rollicking police thriller. Um, and uh, we will all get a chance to uh, discuss the prisoner, the scatter here is too great, and perhaps you're kidding me. You know, I um, remember circa 1981 or 82, I found a book in my uh, father's uh, library. Uh, entitled The Thirteenth House and it was this very exciting discovery because one was familiar with Karachi uh, my, my clan also resides in Karachi and, uh, my dada is from Paposh Nagar my Nanyal resided in uh, uh, Purani Namayesh and so one is familiar with Karachi one reads the newspapers, or one scans the newspapers as a, as a boy. But this was the first time I found Karachi represented in prose, in fiction. Uh, the 13th House, uh, very few people might remember, was written by Adam Zaminza, who went on to write several other books, but has sort of fallen out of the canon. The next time this sort of sense of discovery stirred me was I think maybe a decade later when I came across I think Zeba Sadik's 38 Bahadrabad. Um, and again, this excitement to, to find your city distilled in a different medium. Um, you know, New Yorkers don't have this sort of excitement. Uh, New York has been treated in prose and poetry and film for, for close to a century. Um, but I can remember these, these instances. Um, and so, you know, every decade one would come across something. Sara Soleri wrote something, uh, a piece in Granta, uh, but it wasn't really uh, fiction. Now, anyway, in any event, now we see the emergence of the Karachi novel. Um, and since we're here uh, uh, lumped together anthropologically as Karachiites, we have to contend with this, uh, with this phenomenon. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure each, each of these novelists has a different motivation to write. Representation, the representation of Karachi may or may not be um, at the forefront of their uh, the, the, the sort of uh, their imperatives or their objectives. So let me ask Bilal um, um what do you feel? Do you, do you feel tethered to a tradition? Do you feel you're breaking new ground? Uh, do you feel this responsibility to uh, reify Karachi in prose or do you feel something else altogether? Um, thanks, HM. Uh, you know, the funny thing is that you know, the problematic of my book is really that there are very, very, very few narratives about Karachi. Um, and writing about a place that has not been imagined um, is incredibly difficult. And thinking about a place that's not been imagined through narratives is incredibly difficult. So that was my uh, kind of problematic. Um, in, in my book. Um, and the idea is that here's somebody who is actually trying to write about Karachi. Now, 
Um, again, you know, I'm not saying that Karachi is not being written about. I, I think just want to acknowledge Kamala, who's been writing about Karachi yeah. um, for a long time. But you know, I mean, if you want, if you think about it, right? I mean, there are no histories of Karachi. Um, what do you see in your head if you want to imagine what Karachi was like in the 1960s or the 70s or the 80s? Um, Karachi has been imagined through certain stories, and they're all very particular kinds of stories. Um, and that has very real ramifications on um, your real lives because the world inside your head, the world in which you make decisions, is that world of stories that you hear about the place. So that that really was the problematic, funnily, uh, when I was writing my book and you know trying to read up about Karachi and you know keep running into this problem that there are no, as HM point pointed out, very few novels on Karachi um, or very few histories of Karachi. So, but the funny thing is, the month that I published, literally, Umar's book, come, Umar, Umar's book comes out, and two months after, two months after that, Sava's book, book also comes out. So, I think it's a, it's a it's a wonderful moment actually, where you are getting these imaginaries of the city that did not exist before, and uh, for me, I mean, I, I think that my book concerns itself quite explicitly about trying to imagine this place, trying to come up with a story that can do justice to the range of uh, experiences um, in the city. And again, I mean, that is, um, that is that, that's an endeavor that's bound to end in defeat, and that's what, you know, uh, the writer who's writing the narrative of the book, he, he acknowledges it, but yet at the same time, it's important uh, to try to create narratives about the place. Uh, so that, because that's the place we actually live in, and we make our real life decisions through the stories that we um, that we hear about the place. So for me, that is a key task. The next plot point, it must be said, uh, after Zeba Sadiq, who was of course, uh, Bahadabad, of course, was my friend Kamla Shamsi, City by the Sea, um, and there, you know, you say there isn't much on Karachi. Asif Farukhi uh, edited a wonderful volume which I came across um, very recently uh, called Look at Karachi from Here. Look at the city. Look at the city from here. Uh, which is not, which is a collection of writings on Karachi that date back to Saint Horchand, uh, uh, which would be circa 1850. And you have these diaries from uh, colonial uh, Mame Sahabs. Uh, so there's this nice little cogency that Asif Farakhi has, uh, might have fused. Um, so uh, just for me to complete my, you know, to, to be more comprehensive uh, in my introduction, I must acknowledge these two critical uh, uh, data points. But these are academic issues, you know, these, these are somewhat academic issues and Bilal Tanvir is an academic. Um, Sabah and Tia is, uh, is a journalist. Do you see things uh, the way that Bilal does or did you have other motivations, other objectives uh, in penning uh, Karachi or kidding? Um, when I, after I read Bilal's book, um, I realized that we, both of our books, I'm not giving anything away, but both of our books deal um, with a bomb blast that happens at the same place in Karachi outside the gas station. And I didn't write that this was common, but I, I and I don't think it was. I, I I wanted to write about the aftermath of the bomb blast from a very like journalist point of view. What happens? You know, <coughs> mass of flesh and you know cops from you know all over the place, and um, journalists trying to make a story out of a human tragedy. But um, you know, this very kind of tragic in that moment because you know people are um, are laughing about it and they're forgotten about it, and journalists are just really sort of on the chase for that story. Um, and I realized how different after I read this book. I was like. We've we looked at the same issue. I mean, my book isn't entirely about the, the bomb blast, but it, it's funny that we have this thing in common, but obviously as a journalist, you treat it differently. So for me, a bomb blast was, to treat it in the book was the same way I would treat it as a reporter. It's a story that you go out to cover, and there are many horrible little things that happen there. You know, the cops are there, which I'm sure we can, can talk about in much greater detail than I can. Uh, trying to get to know sort of any sort of investigation done in, in very bad circumstances. There are journalists all over the place. The, you know, um, and 
So for me, I think when you look at the story, uh, for me, a lot of it writing the book was how I saw, saw, sort of saw things when I was reporting it. Um, so for me, for example, I'm sure if somebody else went to fashion week, they would take away many other things. Uh, for me, it was no, a story, but also like the different side things that happened, or an interesting festival for that matter, um, which I've also written about in my book. So I think I wasn't looking really at, um, at trying to, um, to talk about it in any grand way. I just wanted to write about it from, an eyes, of, from the eyes of a journalist that you don't see, or people just see, you know, a literature festival that we're here at, but a journalist sees, you know, is there a story here? And somebody said something interesting, and somebody said something controversial. As I'm sure many of the reporters sitting here will be hoping that somebody will in the next three days. Has there been anything interesting been said on the stage yet? I said, yeah, but I did. Your novel is. Um, sort of um, also a satire, right? So there are other traditions that inform your work. Uh, do you, were you conscious of sort of invoking other traditions, um, um, uh, traditions that have nothing to do with Karachi, nothing to do with uh, Pakistan, nothing to do with the subcontinent? Are there, are there, are there, are there precedents? Yeah, I, I really, I, I really love the Jones diary. Um, not because of anything else, but because I think it articulates a single girl living in a big city with some very odd friends and um, a very interesting work life and a, you know, the romantic possibilities of trying to meet a man in a big city. Um, so that was sort of it. You know, I love that book since it came out, and I wanted to write something similar um, based on a Karachi perspective. You know, just being in a big city, but obviously a lot of things are different, um, and having an interesting job and having interesting friends. Um, and I think the also the, the protagonist in the book is also a very cynical person, so um, is not really optimistic about the future of Karachi. The book is called Karachi. You're kidding me, because the fact of it living in the city now it takes away a bit of your soul every single day. Uh, it may be home, but it, it does end up getting away your spirit. So I wanted to write something about people who live in the city, um, for whom the city is really got to be and if you want to escape at every single point, um, also it's, it's cynical as well, because. Um, so I didn't really make a conscious effort as I was um, to write that satire. I think it's mm -hmm. because the voice is so cynical and, and the people in her life are so cynical uh, about everything. And I think also as journalists, there's also a feeling of being done that um, so many times. So obviously I'm sure a bystander, as the bystander is in the last book, Peter Paul Glass very differently than the characters in my book, uh, because there are all these people a million of people different, and I used to be so and of course, you know, Bridget Jones's diary is informed by Jane Austen and, and, and so there is this kind of tradition that's independent from perhaps merely the Karachi novel. Um, I was reading Umar that um, in writing or during you, once you were writing The Prisoner, you read some crime fiction, you read, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Vikram Chandra's uh, Sacred Games. So, did, you know, why did you read that? Do you feel connected to the genre of crime, the crime of, of crime fiction, or do you think this is all a silly discussion and you've got your own uh, personal reasons, uh, independent reasons to write this, uh, The Prisoner? I think uh, <clears throat> this is a combination of things. Uh, I think the you mentioned Vikram Chandra's Sacred Games, uh, and if you sort of look at other sort of crime fiction books, possible, you know, something like Godfather, or whatever, the most interesting thing that I found was that these books create a world. They create a world, whether it's the underworld of Mumbai or you know the world of Sicilian families in, uh, in the five boroughs of New York. And I thought that uh, it would be very interesting to do the same thing with, uh, with Karachi. And it, the second thing, you know, coming from my background uh, within the police was that uh, the one thing that constantly struck me was that within the police we had uh, fantastic stories to tell. But uh, none of us would tell them because it was highly unlikely that an outsider would gain ingress into that enclosed world. And also unlikely that an insider would sort of write, uh, write about that world as well. So for me, it was a combination of these things uh, that drove this book. So do you find do you find that in this particular genre, in, in the prisoner, do you find art imitating uh, life, life imitating art, Chaudhry Aslam, Chaudhry Aslam's literary doppelganger inhabits 
the prisoner and Chaudhary Aslam uh, is no longer with us. Um, do you do you find what is the relationship of reality to fiction in in the prisoner? I think for the prisoner, the the relationship is a very close one uh, because uh, most of the incidents that uh, that I narrated in the book were either sort of things that happened to me or, or to other people, the police names, dates. Uh, and uh, details like change. So in that way, it was almost an easier book to write because uh, I took a world which had not been written about, uh, you know, changed the stories around, created a plot around it, uh, and, and so sort of put it out there. Bilal Parmir, um, your, uh, your, I mean, your novel, there's a connection of short stories, uh, connected short stories. Um, in this ambition to try to reify Karachi, try to reify Karachi in prose, um, you have written a narrative that is fragmented. Uh, and may not be a co it's not a, it's not a cogent narrative. Um, so is this? I mean, can can one actually distill a city of 80 million, the sixth largest in the world, on paper? Is is it a is it a reasonable ambition? No, no, I don't. Uh, it's a horrible ambition, uh, you know, and something I would not recommend. Uh, but but the question is, I mean, I think that for me the question of form is important, and thinking about you know if you can say something interesting just by the manner of saying it, which is essentially um, form. Uh, you know, form, you, know, you can write a book in many different ways, but thinking about, you know, if your way of telling the story is can also say something, uh, can also solve problems of content, can also help you solve problems of what you were trying to say. Uh, that is a hard thing, and I think that that's, um, I, I've tried to use, um, you know, this, this fractured form to actually uh, think about certain issues. And one of the issues that I kind of think about is, is the issue of stories themselves, uh, issues of narratives. What do narratives do? Why do we write stories? Why do we read stories, right? Um, and there are obviously many different reasons. But one of the, you know, reasons that stories, one of the functions that stories perform and, you know, um, and that's why I think you know, Omar's book is such a fantastic book, is because they help us understand reality. They are simplifications of reality. Right? All narratives, all stories are simplifications of reality. And, and the amazing thing about it is that they, by simplifying that reality, you can also help people see things that, were not, that they were not seeing before. Um, and I think that this is why you know, this ties back into what I was saying earlier about you know, having very few imaginaries of Karachi, having very few narratives of Karachi. Uh, because then you see very few things, right? Um, if there are only, the only stories coming out of Karachi are stories of a particular kind, which are new stories mostly, um, then you imagine that place in a certain way and that impoverishes the range of decisions that you can take uh, in that place. So for me, um, that is one of the questions that again I, I raise in the book that can you, is it possible to do justice um, to, to a city um, uh, with, uh, with, with, with the story and the fact is that you cannot because narratives are not substitutes of lived experience. Um, they, are, they are simplifications of reality but those are very useful simplifications and the challenge is to use those simplifications in order to train people to engage with reality in, in complex ways. Sorry, I hope I'm making sense. Sorry for going like that. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, just to add to that, I think also the, the question of you know a novel or a, any novel about Karachi that would sort of be representative is kind of ridiculous because it's a city of 20 million people. Um, you walk down the street and nobody speaks the same language, um, and obviously there are millions of professions in that city. Uh, so, but nobody can actually write a representative work, even with short stories, I'm sure you could, you could have written about a hundred of different characters witnessing that one, that one event. And similarly with the, with the police work as well, I'm sure this is not going to be written from the perspective of the criminals involved, or of uh, lower levels, you know, in question, or, 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 another, or from the perspective of prisoners. 
she had said. And similarly with journalism, like, like you know, I wrote a story as a character based on a reporter, I'm sure you could write a million stories like that from this an editor from the subject who's actually being grilled, like I'm sure many cops have been by journalists uh, over the years. <coughs> I don't really think that there will ever be a definitive uh, norm. I don't think we should strive to write one. I think we should strive to write to create small words, but um, and I, I'm generally uncomfortable with this word representation, right? I think I, yeah, I think this is the word that just comes up again and again. But I just don't think that I'm entirely comfortable with, with it. what are you representing? You're not representing. I think the words are engagement. Perhaps it's your, it's a product of your engagement with a particular city. It's a, it's a certain experience that you're building on the page. Um, so I think I'm just, you know, uh, and that is obviously informed by certain reality, but I, I don't think that you are ever setting out to represent because that's an impossible and I don't think it's even a worthy goal that you are kind of, you know, going for. Um, so, uh, so, as a journalist, um, do you think that fiction complements reportage in um, in understanding a reality? I'm sure a lot of people would say a lot of journalism and Pakistan is fiction. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I highly disagree with. But I've been told this. Just in Pakistan people. or generally, what if we have got some fabulous foreign correspondents here? Do they, do they uh, accurately depict uh, Pakistan? I mean, is journalism, is, is it just peculiar to Pakistan? This? I, I've only worked with journalists and Pakistan. <coughs> I, I don't think that we just speak for anything else. Um, uh, while I was writing the book, I was also working at the same time. So um, I wrote about real events uh, that had happened, but I obviously, because they were fiction, so it, you know, I, I tried to play them out the way I imagined them playing out in my head, not necessarily the way they played out in real life. Um, and that said, when I was writing, it was actually comfortable to be able to write fiction. Um, and I think at one point while uh, the book was being edited, one of the bits that was true and genuinely sort of, you know, exactly how it happened was the bit that's, that seemed the most untrue in the book. Um, it didn't seem like fiction at all. It just it seemed like something bizarre that could not actually be fiction. You know, it was it was just so out of this world. Except it was a real event, and I think that's kind of what reality is like. It's a place that is so bizarre at times, where even reality doesn't seem, um, you know, not fiction. It's not even fiction. It, this can't possibly be real. So it must be something you've just made up out of your head. Um, I don't know whether they actually complement it in any way. I think that this, like reportage and fiction are two completely things, different things altogether, and. Um, which is why I didn't ever think I would be able to write Well, I'll give you a tangible example. Uh, let's say one is uh, wants to understand what New York was like in the 80s. So one might pick up Bright Lights, Big City, Jamie Kearney's um, opus. Um, and so you get a sense of reality. So in, in that way... But again, I think as, as Dorot said, that you know, um, it's difficult to find very you know, detailed accounts of how life was like in Karachi in the 60s, the 70s, and 80s. And again, because it's such a big city, um, whose perspective or what kind of version are you actually getting? Are you getting Karachi from the perspective of somebody who's privileged? Is it Karachi from somebody who is uh, um, in the army? Is it somebody who is in uh, the police? Is it somebody who is a journalist? Um, everyone's version of what Karachi was like in the 80s or even in just one particular year of the 80s, I would say 88 or 87, you know, the worst years of violence, they're going to be very different. Um, so I, I'm sure that it, as a said, it might help us you know, understand the city a little bit better. Um, but I'm not sure it would really complement so it would let us understand how the city was in the 80s. You know, this, this axiom uh, that I uh, like uh, the sound of, it's uh, fiction is a lie that tells the truth. Um, and, um, you know, in, when you read a story in a newspaper, the conceit of that, of, of, of this exercise, is that you're reading, you're reading the truth. But you know that in, in, in good fiction, you get a truths that uh, that stir you in in, 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 a, in a very different way. Um, Omar, I was reading, um, I was reading this book the other day that I picked up called uh, From Dongri to Dubai. By, uh, by an Indian journalist named Zaidi, um, which um, is concerns the Bombay underworld. The Dongri, of course, the lower middle class Muslim neighborhood in Bombay, and produced uh, such uh, 
heavyweights as Dawood Ibrahim and Kota Khatib and Salam. Karachi is uh, 300 years old at best. So we cannot have writing about Karachi beyond uh, the, the, the 1700s, 1700s. So, so there is a, also a, another reason for that. Sure. <laughs> No, hold me to it. I mean, and again, I, I, again, I'm qualifying it. I'm, uh, you know, I'm. It's again not a reflection on the city. It's not. It's just reflection. <laughs> Admitting my limitation as a writer, what I feel, you know, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm a very narrow writer. But I think that you know, I mean, to be honest, you know, this is something that I personally realized that I think that all the writers that I gravitate toward, all the writing that I consider to be great, um, it's. Emerge, it emerges out of a very specific of an engagement with a very very specific physical space. Um, I am yet to know of a book that again you know there are very good books about places that writers have never been, but I don't think that they are like really great books. I mean, you know, and again I'm thinking of Tolstoy, I'm thinking of um, uh, I, Marquez, I'm thinking of uh, you know uh, Naipaul, Biswas. <coughs> You know, they're all emerging out of a very specific engagement. You can talk about the universal. Again, it does not rule out uh, the universal. Uh, you are ultimately writing about, you know, very few things, right? Love, death, mourning, grief, um, sadness, relationships. But I think that, you know, the re you are able to tap into uh, your subconscious 
when you put yourself in conversation with places you've lived for very, very, uh, for a very, very long period of time. And again, I mean, as I said, you know, uh, that's perhaps just my limitation, um, and I am a narrow writer, and again, I'm, I say that again and again, because this is something I come up with, it's a very honest assessment, this is something I come up with again and again and again, when I write, you know, I spent like, what, five years writing this damn book that I wrote, <laughs> and it's a very, very thin book, you know. Um, I mean, I kill myself to death, I like, try to like, write it, and I'm just like, it's like this, like what? 45,000 words? Are you kidding me? You know, so there you go, and it's supposed to be like, 30 years of my life or something, no. So it doesn't, I mean, it's also about limitations, also I think kind of the city we're from, um, where there is so much to write about. Um, you know, you could write entire novels or anything, so just based on one job yeah. um, you know, and, and cover everything. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, I don't know about you, but I feel the need to put as I remember it and as doing when I was writing, I think for you know, sending a cat off to some other a few days and I know this, and most people would have died before that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I'm going to cross, you're going to have to say this. Um, but uh, yeah, and I think there's just so much to to write about from this in the city as well. There's just so many different people and, and questions as I said before, but also so many different places. Um, you know, just the, I mean, just the fact that most of the city brings up so many different ideas and, and, and versions and just the city it is. I, I don't know if I would have to look elsewhere for inspiration at this point because Karachi itself offers so much. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's about narrowing. I think it's also one doesn't need to at this point. I suppose if you would run out of idea and have sort of written maybe six hundred stories, then you would possibly say, well, I've done now with Karachi. But you know, that's not going to happen because again, there are not enough people either writing about the city um, or in fiction or in non-fiction for that sort of thing. You know, um, I am, have a tendency to invoke Chekhov because he's um, a co I am. Go for it. Uh, Chekhov was writing about middle class anxieties at the turn of the century. Uh, his his prose and his, his worldview was grounded in a particular reality. But there's something about Chekhov that transcends the, the topicality of his uh, ecosystem. And um, one would one would sort of um, I think a good piece of fiction transcends the mere topicality. So if, you know, if let's say Omar Shahid has written this crack uh, police thriller, um, that has resonance outside Karachi and of course Lahore, perhaps Islamabad, whichever, but you know, across the world. I mean, Puzo's uh, Godfather is about these, uh, these sort of, um, everybody knows what Puzo's Godfather is about. <laughs> but, That's not the <laughs> but, it, but for some reason it has this resonance. And so, um, you know, one would hope that um, the Karachi novel has resonance outside of Karachi. Um, much, much like Chekhov has resonance outside uh, the time and the place he was writing. Um, I think um, we uh, need to open up the conversation and let uh, the horries in to uh, Karachi. So <coughs> let's have a uh, mic going around and uh, let's take some questions. We've got a question up here. Do we have a mic? Yes or no, maybe? one of the names that's come up several times today already in Bombay. And, you know, thinking of this massive amount of writing we've had about Bombay that's been coming out in recent years, whether fiction, non-fiction, and stuff in between. Um, but what the, the big difference, obviously, is you have this cinematic imagination in Bombay. And one of the things about Karachi that is, I think, 
might make writing about it difficult. I don't know, I'd like you to tell me if in the visual imagining of Karachi, that isn't there, I mean, Lahore, we know images of Lahore, we went to the talk this morning, we saw those reinforced, but does it make it difficult to write about a city which many outsiders, certainly those outside Pakistan don't know, and one which doesn't have visual images which are um, based on people's imagination? Can I answer that? Please, I think please. it's a very strong visual image when people think of Karachi. They always, I mean, it's this, you know, they think of a, of a beheading and, um, and lots of crime. And I, I'm sure that if you ask lots of people in the audience in Lahore what they imagine of Karachi if they've never been there is the exact same thing. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's a very strong visual image without it being in movies. And the depiction of Karachi in movies or in, even in television shows. Um, like there's an episode of Sherlock that's set in Karachi, I mean it's not really Karachi, it's like a desert somewhere. Um, which is hard to imagine given that there is no space, empty space left in Karachi, but the South Plaza is not being built. Um, so there is a strong visual image, I would say. It's obviously the most of crime and, and, um, and it's based on, because there's been so much news reportage from Pakistan and from Karachi over the years that uh, the visual image when you ask them what the thing Karachi looks like is this. I, I don't think a lot of people even put the sea in that. Um, but that's the things which happen within Karachi, not off Karachi. Not off Karachi, because I mean, it's not like there's a you know, massively amazing skyline or um, an into Karachi, it's, it is, but not, nothing that's really just, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, small there's consolation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's nothing that you could sort of really pick out and say that, you know, this must be Karachi. Yeah, I think that, you know, I mean, uh, that's a que you know, question that, you know, traditionally there hasn't been an imaginary, and again, imagine the word image uh, is embedded into imagination in imaginary. And again, with that, you imagine a uh, visual uh, component to it. So you're absolutely right. I mean, I don't think that there is uh, any dispute in that. But Bombay is a, uh, you know, because of the visual culture, because of the cinema, has been a much, you know, there has been imaginatives, even if not in written narratives, but certainly. Um, in, in cinema, but in Karachi, that's not really the case. Yes, so. I, don't, I think also the image of Karachi often is, a, is one that's kind of frozen in time. I think we see that a lot more with the horror depiction as well, like a, like a city that still has very old traditions that probably didn't even exist around the time of partition that somehow seem to have been uh, ingrained into memory. But I think also the image of Karachi often is very serious, <coughs> that it must be a static, you know, that if there's crime, that it must always be you know, infested with crime. I'm sure there were, there were good years, I mean, and I'm sure even I can recall when there was not that much crime in the city. There were many brief years, but there were. Uh, but I no. think that there was a frozen kind of thing. I mean, uh, just really, as far as uh, I think Omar Shah has been corroborated, per capita homicide ratio in uh, Karachi uh, was lower than uh, Boston and Seattle uh, from about 2001 to 2006. <coughs> it went up. Uh, you know, 100 people who died in Karachi, in a city of one of the six largest cities in the world, in 2003. So the reality of Karachi has changed, and I remember foreign uh, correspondents would have to preface their uh, pieces with this, uh, with with the following phrase: "This once chaotic city." And you know, so Karachi, uh, for a journalist perhaps, uh, you, uh, has a you know, there, 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 are, there, there are images that uh, maybe haunt you in the evening. Um, uh, but, but Karachi is so large that um, it has, uh, you know, it, 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 the heading doesn't come to my head. I mean, the sea comes, I, I've, you know, having been, spent a lot of time there, uh, the sea is something that comes to my head. Uh, and, and, you know, I've, been at, in and out of Jinnah's mausoleum uh, since childhood, so the mausoleum comes uh, to mind. So that there is an imaginary for us, for, for us uh, natives. Um, and with, I think, the emergence of a Karachi novel, there may be a, an imaginary that, uh, that, uh, that, will, that, that will transcend sort of, sort of this, uh, us natives. Um, next question. We have somebody over there, somebody right there. Yeah, so
Yeah, you don't need a mic. This
enjoy playing the guessing game of you know, matching the character to the person in reality. But no, I, I, I haven't any, Sabha may have a good take on this. I haven't had a thing where someone came up and said uh, that you shouldn't have written about these characters. The, the only thing that uh, I will say is that uh, what I did, I had some people who said, uh, you know, because I talk about the politics of Karachi and especially the way that like, politics has played out in the past 20 odd years. And it's interesting, in fact, Bilal and I were having this talk uh, last night that uh, we don't have a lot of, uh, despite the fact that to me, the, the whatever has happened in Karachi over the past 20, 25 years is fascinating. You know, the way, uh, whether it was the growth of political parties, ethnic groups, uh, how you know they factionalized, whatever has happened, it, it's a fascinating tale for me. Maybe I, I'm looking at it from the point of view of a police officer. But uh, what I did find interesting was that there was no, uh, there was no narrative about this kind of stuff. Uh, and all of this sort of stuff, uh, Karachi's political dynamics have essentially shaped our perceptions of the city over the past 20, 25 years. But uh, there seems to be a dearth of, of material on that. So, and people said to me, but you know, do you think that you may have crossed a line writing about that aspect of it? And I said, well, how can you write about this aspect of Karachi uh, without kind of pointing out uh, and talking about political parties and the way that they've developed or whatever uh, we've seen over the past 20 years or so? Uh, I completely agree with that, and I, I was just thinking um, in my head that. Um, yeah, how else would you write about political parties and stuff? But in terms of people uh, coming up to me, yes, literally since the, I think the day people found out I was writing a book that had a reporter as a character, I was asked you questions, is this about you? And is this about X, Y, Z? Which is again, you know, people playing that guessing game. Um, and obviously your book has been out for a while, but mine has just been released today. So I find the guessing game, or people telling me that there's a guessing game very amusing, but I haven't read it yet. Um, that's it. Uh, when I was about 10 or 11, I think the first bit of serious writing advice I got was write about what you know. Um, obviously, I didn't follow up with that until um, I became a journalist. And, and so when I was writing this book, it came, kept coming back to me. Um, and obviously, I think one does write about an environment that I've like, uh, experienced, but in your case, obviously, it was the police, and in my case, it was uh, writing about a newsroom. But that said, once I got, I'm sure you also got, must have worked through several police stations. And there are all sorts of cops there. And I worked at several news organizations and, and worked with lots of different people. So, so yes, there were shades of people that I had met or I'd heard about as well. Um, and little snippets of conversation that um, I did use in the book. Um, and as I said, there are some things that actually happened in the literature festival or a podcast or, um, or other things that are real events. Uh, but yes, I, I found that. And I think that's also a little disservice because that kind of means that uh, writers who are writing about things that are very close to reality, does, does that mean they just kind of took a real story and changed names and then just put it out? I mean, there's an actual process that goes on in writing a book. Uh, I was talking to Omer yesterday and he said me how long it took for him to write it. And I can tell you this, it, it took me less than a year, but it was a very difficult year. Um, I don't want to increase that it was easy, but no, it, it does take a lot of time. So I think it's also kind of ridiculous to tell somebody who has spent years in the world's five, five years, right? Uh, to say that, oh, this is all real, so you must have just taken like XYZ thing and you know, just change the names around, then you kind of put the book out. Firstly, that's not, nobody would buy it, and B, you know, we really must be pulling off the biggest con of this year. I think we've got uh, time for one or two really quick questions. One up here. Um, it might not be particularly relevant, but since three or four died in the world thinking Karachiites, I would just like your views on uh, something more topical. Will the battle for Pakistan be fought in North Bhutiristan or in Karachi? What do you think about it? <laughs> I'll give you my answer. I have not a blasted view. <laughs> <laughs> I think what uh, in the present uh, sort of scenario, what makes Karachi particularly interesting is that what we, we find in Karachi is a mirror image of the dynamics or internal politics of what's going on in the tribal areas. Uh, to an extent which you do not find, for instance, in other parts of the country, for instance, in Punjab. So I think whether it is 
factional fighting between uh, you know, Maulana Fazlullah's TTP Sawak or uh, the TTP Mohammed or the Masoods uh, of the original Tariq Taliban Pakistan. You find all of those groups represented in Karachi, which also means that that's why the stakes in Karachi are much more, uh, are much higher, uh, and why it, you know, it attracts the sort of level of violence or, or, uh, or intrigue that it does. So to an extent that in no other place uh, in Pakistan does. So certainly, it, it's, it's in whatever happens in Karachi will mirror uh, what's happening in Karachi. I think the, there are several battles to be fought, not just in Karachi. But I also think that there's, um, and this is based on some of the other comments that have made, that there's also a great deal of personal revisionism and romanticism that we associate with this. Um, and, you know, it seems like now things are bad, but I think when, when I moved to Karachi, it was 95, my parents would make the most intelligent decision of moving to Karachi in a year um, that was quite well, terrible. And in the 90s, everyone said it would never get worse than this. But in the 2000s, it seemed like it was much worse. Um, and to say things like, you know, I mean, racism and, and discrimination has existed in Karachi since I'm sure the day the city existed. I, I remember when I was um, on a very mean day at work, I was going through New York Times archives, and there's a hilarious story about Karachi um, called Karachi is a wretched city. And it's just like these Karachiites moaning and complaining about how much, you know, the city is awful and, you know, there's nothing here. And, you know, when will these damn kids like hurry up and do something about the city? And it's kind of interesting to read that now because obviously uh, people still have the same complaints about the city. Yeah, I wrote a damn book about it. <laughs> <laughs> people still have the same complaints about the city. I think there are several battles to be fought. And um, not just in Karachi or in North Islam, I think there are problems throughout the country that um, don't seem to make it obviously in, in the headlines because you know they're not as exotic as Karachi or as you know forbidden as North Waziristan. Um, but I'm sure there are problems in your neighborhood in the lane next door that have just not emerged um, yet. I mean these people sell is very fashionable these days to mention. So I'm just going to upstairs. <laughs> I think um Is it uh, a <laughs> Uh, I think, uh, you know, all, we're all storytellers and so to uh, make us, uh, to compel us to sort of hold forth on the socio-political vicissitudes that will inform the country is, uh, it's, I think it's generally within, uh, outside, our, outside our purview. But I think it's interesting how in the imagination of the country, Karachi serves as a metaphor. Karachi serves as a metaphor for Pakistan. And I don't think that, uh, you know, it, it might be an apt metaphor, it might not be an apt metaphor. Um, I mean, 60% of the population of Pakistan is in the Punjab. So if you want to talk about reality or the reality of Pakistan, um, one perhaps should uh, think about other parts of the country that, that will inform the future. So it is, it's, it's interesting how Karachi is a metaphor for Pakistan. I'm not convinced that uh, that is, uh, it will corresponds to reality. Um, do we have time for one more question or are we done here? Excuse me. <laughs> um, before you uh, raise your hand, I need some... Uh... Okay, I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, thank you for being part of the Vivium in Karachi. Um, I think a round of applause for the <laughs> The books are available for sale and the authors will be signing copies and all to make your way there.